Really? Well, joining us now for a reaction, let's welcome Texas Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne, along with former acting White House Council of Economic Advisors, Chairman Thomas Phillipson. Good to see you both. Well, let me let me start, Congresswoman, with with what the White House rep was saying. I mean, isn't it exactly the opposite that this administration came into office with a 4.5 percent, which some people would say is a roaring economy. Uh, and last quarter, it was actually in contraction by one and a half percent. It sounds exactly the opposite of what she said. I, I think you've seen a lot of that in, during this administration, as they say one thing and w the rest of America is looking around going, this is not what we're seeing. This is not what we're seeing. This is not what was happening, you know, January 2021 when uh, he came into office. We were on our way up. What we've seen from day one is he's been attacking pretty much every American business, every American large industry, definitely our oil and gas industries, and you've seen inflation as a result. And his three-point plan that he came out with today was genius. One, we're going to attack the Fed. Two, we're going to blame Putin. And three, he wants to decrease the deficit by increasing the size of the federal government. This administration continues to make blunder after blunder, creating crisis after crisis. The American people are not stupid. They're going to they're going to feel that at the at the, uh, the polls in November. Well, and Tom, <laughs> the 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 piece that that Biden wrote in the Wall Street Journal yesterday was it was filled with errors. By the way, first of all, starting saying that when he took office, the economy was stalled. Not true, as I just said. Uh, he said uh, Americans, since he came into office, have increased their savings. That's not true either. Savings have gone down. There, he says there's less debt. Uh, in fact, there's much more consumer debt, $16 trillion worth. He, I could go on and on. But what he said that was truthful kind of worried me even more than the falsehoods. He, he said if average monthly job creation shifts in the next year from current levels of 500,000 to something closer to 150,000, it'll be a sign that we are successful. In other words, he wants a slow economy, or at the very least, he's preparing us for a slow economy. Does that concern you? Yeah, I think, I mean, the Wall Street Journal op-ed was kind of interesting. It was an announcement of a plan, but basically announced that he had no plan, it seemed to me. Like, at this point, the White House fighting inflation is like an arsonist shutting out fires. So what he proposed, essentially, is a bunch of demand subsidies, which he calls making things more affordable for people by essentially subsidizing child care, even student loan in some sense, and, and other aspects, housing of the economy. And when you stimulate demand, presumably you will put upward uh, pressure on prices. He couples that up with sort of Nixonian price controls on drugs in response to inflation, which most people uh, think is very misguided. What really needs to happen is obviously we had a money supply increase of about a third, and we, we had a constraint of supply, which basically took particularly hard hit in the energy sector, but also in other, other sectors as well that needs to be freed up. Well, Congress, Congresswoman, what he appears to be preparing us for is, is the Obama uh, and this is for the Congresswoman, what he, is the, for the Obama era of slow growth. I mean, we had an average growth during Obama era of under 2%. Uh, it's kind of yeah. he wants everybody to dial back their expectations of the American dream. He had an opportunity with us coming out of COVID after so many forced lockdowns on the economy, so many people forced to stay home from actually being able to increase, you know, their own their own revenue, their own um, um, ability to be successful. He has such an opportunity at the beginning of his of his presidency, and we've seen the exact opposite. He has literally attacked every single market within the U.S. Has favored foreign um, um, foreign powers, foreign nations, foreign businesses over our own, and we're feeling it each and every day. I mean, the amount of money that m normal Americans are paying at the gas pump, I'm working. Family is now paying more than two thousand dollars per year on gas than they did right. last year. We're we're feeling supply chain issues, and yeah, everything that this this administration has promised has been the exact opposite. There was such a, a high opportunity for them to come in, and instead they just had disaster after disaster. Well, and and Tom, the the, the point is is that during the Trump administration we had high growth. And we had low inflation. During the Reagan administration, inflation came down while the economy was growing. At one year, it grew over 7 percent. I mean, it's, it's not, you don't have to have slow or almost anemic growth, if it, perhaps even negative growth, 
in order to get rid of inflation, correct? Yeah, no, I mean, if you look at that op-ed, he ends it by saying he, he welcomes an honest discussion of how to help Americans. And then he goes down in the same op-ed as saying that the Trump uh, supply-side trickle-down economics doesn't work, even though we documented, I signed off on the 2020 economic report of the president, showing exactly that the incomes of the poor have gone up a lot faster than the incomes of the rich. And we had income and wealth inequality going down under Trump. And I yes. think just being dishonest about what happened in that period doesn't help poor people. Well, and also, I would say, Congresswoman, he's being dishonest about the solution. You don't you don't get rid of inflation by increasing government spending. It's exactly the opposite. And one, one new plan he has is, is, of course, to get rid of student debt. Uh, and, and we had this famous exchange, by the way, between a working class American and Elizabeth Warren uh, about getting rid of student debt. Let me just play that for those who have forgotten. Roll tape. I just want to ask one question. My daughter's getting out of school. I've saved all my money. She doesn't have any student loans. Am I going to get my money back? Of course not. So you're going to pay for people who didn't save any money, and those of us that did the right thing get screwed. No, it's not even like that's screwed. We of course we something. did. My buddy had fun, bought a car, went on vacations. I saved my money. He made more than I did. But I worked a double shift, worked extra. My daughter worked, she was 10. So you're laughing. Yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. We did the right thing, and we get screwed. Congresswoman, I love that. At first she thought this was, okay, I got this guy in the palm of my hand. He likes the idea. Then he realized, she realized this guy worked three jobs in order to pay off his daughter's debt, school debt, and, and uh, he wanted a refund. And he said, we're getting screwed. In fact, even the Washington Post says that this $230 billion plan we're going to pay for with higher inflation will, will represent all the benefits. 71% of the benefits will go to the wealthiest Americans. Absolutely. I mean, this is a desperate ploy by a desperate president to buy votes for November. 80% of Americans don't have don't have um, um, college debt. What about all of those who have paid for it? And you've got you've got wh why not health care debt? Why not mortgage debt? Why not de forgive credit card debt? Look, when people sign that, these are college educated people who are signing these. You need to pay back your debt. Yeah, absolutely. Congresswoman uh, Tom, we got to leave it at there. Uh, I could talk to you for hours. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it. <laughs>